Hey everyone, it's Sunday morning and I've got some things to show you. First of all, the last couple days there have been so many more butterflies in my garden. Of course they all just went and hid. There were just three of them flying around right here. So it's like we had a couple of days of some really good, long, drenching rains and everything is growing and all the butterflies are just coming out. Some of my balloon milkweed seed pods have popped open. You can see this one's empty because I've already collected the seeds. And I've got a nice supply of them. So that is super exciting. Maybe one of them will pop today. And I can show you what that's like. Um, I do have videos in the past of how I collect the seeds from them, but you got to be quick because those little milkweed bugs, they'll be all in there. Trying to get those seeds and I want to get them before they do. And then back here sitting in this chair, look at this wild lime. This was a pot of wild lime that I had in the enclosure in the Butterfly Haven. And they ate it down to nothing. Look at that. So that's why I have so many potted wild limes because I know I'm going to go through it. And that was a lot of uh, caterpillars on there. They definitely eat less than the monarchs. But still, if you're going to raise any caterpillars, you got to have a lot of your host plant on hand because you certainly... <laughs> oh, look at this monarch's trying to run off. That golfer is like, nope, not having it. You certainly don't want to run out and go through that craziness of having to run to the store and find the host plants. So, so if you're going to bring pots into the enclosures like I've been doing recently, you got to have a lot of potted host plants ready. Um, and or or have some really good ones growing in your garden like see look at this wild lime behind me mm -hmm. that one I could take a bunch of cuttings of and put in floral tubes in there if need be but the fact is is that I do have it on hand and I know I'm not gonna run out of food for them unless something crazy happens <laughs> and I get a million caterpillars <laughs> And look at all these adorable little mimosas are blooming. I absolutely love these. I love the frilly leaves. I love the little poofy flowers. They're just the cutest. And while we're talking about flowers, look at this zinnia. It is just gorgeous. It's right here outside my enclosure. When I sit in my chair, I get to see it. And the balloons on the balloon milkweed. I guess I can go ahead and pop this one off. Look, there's still, you see it? There's still a milkweed bug in there. thinking he's going to get something. It's all gone, sir. Try again next time. Like y'all, just right here in this one little spot in my garden, I could show you so much. That is what is so incredible about butterfly gardening. Here are some eggs. 
on my Maypop Passion Vine. Since they're kind of all together at the top, it makes me think they're zebra longwing eggs. But time will tell. Maybe I'll take that cutting in. And oh my gosh, you guys. There is one of my favorite little polka dot wasp moths back here on my sweet almond. He was just here. I'm trying to find him again. There is also a little gray hair streak butterfly. Oh, they're both right by each other. How nice of them. You see the wasp moth, the hair streak butterfly is like right there and the wasp moth is like right there. The hair streaks are cool because they're always wiggling or working their hind wings up and down and it makes it look like that's their mouth so if a predator were to come and get them um, the predator would just get a chunk of wing and all the vital parts of the butterfly would still be intact. So it would survive. Over here is the wasp moth. It's got the prettiest coloring. So y'all, I did figure out something. Um, I was going out to get the mill yesterday and my neighbor across the street was mowing his grass and he turned off the mower and drove over to chat with me. And he said he has released, I want to say 60 some odd um, monarch butterflies because he started raising them. And I think that explains why I haven't had as many because he's got tropical milkweed in his backyard. And from what I understand, monarchs prefer laying eggs on tropical milkweed over swamp. Don't ask me why. It's just a thing. And I'm not condoning the use of swamp milkweed. I'm just saying it's a thing. So he's got like lots of caterpillars and I don't have very many because I think all the monarchs are laying their eggs on his tropical milkweed which is fine because he's raising them and releasing them and the butterflies are coming and visiting my garden because i'm seeing a lot more monarch butterflies in my garden and i know i haven't raised that many um monarch butterflies so <laughs> i just find that that interesting and um i think that's why i don't have as many it makes sense he told me he's got like 20 tropical milkweed plants back there. And I did educate him and tell him all the things to do if you're choosing to have tropical milkweed, um, like cutting it back in November. I said cut it back frequently and not letting the seed pods open and spread seeds around. And so he does have all that information and he, he, he will follow it because he, he is like very into nature and taking care of it. And, and I just, I just love it. I just love it. So anyway, I just want to share that. So y'all, there's a beautiful Eastern tiger swallowtail butterfly. And if you ever have like a difficulty identifying them when I was first trying to figure out who's who, the Eastern tiger swallowtails have yellow on the underside and the top side of their wings where the giants are brown on the top side and yellow on the underside.
they're just absolutely gorgeous. I've got their caterpillars. I'll go show you next. I feel like we haven't been in there looking at the caterpillars um, in a minute. I, I feel like I just did it because I just filmed my end of June, or no, end of May, beginning of June members only um, tour. I do a garden tour every month for my members. So they can just kind of see the whole garden from one end to the other as it progresses month to month. They can see how it changes and how things grow. And it's pretty cool. If you want to be a member, it's only $4.99 a month. You get a super cool little emoji icon beside your name when you comment so everybody will know you're a member. And you get access to the monthly garden tour videos. So... There's a little join button in blue, and you just sign up. It's super easy, and it really supports my channel. Helps me get these butterflies, keep these butterflies well fed, and the caterpillars. <laughs> Can't forget the caterpillars. And speaking of the caterpillars, let's go in and see them. Because the ones for the Eastern Tiger are really getting bigger. I think going to be pupating soon. I just don't want to leave this one. He's so, or she, is so beautiful. Okay. Oh, look, he's sitting out. The biggest one is sitting out on the leaf. It's like he wanted to be filmed. Here he is in all of his cuteness. Is he not adorable? <laughs> I just love him. Hello, baby. They're really soft, too, like velvety almost. And then I posted some video or pictures of them on my Instagram too that are really, really cute. There's a good shot. Look how adorable. And there's another little guy right down there. And then this one here is on his way to being green. But he's not quite all the way there yet. Okay, you guys, I just came over to the spice bush swallowtail and giant swallowtail enclosure to see if my little spice bush has turned orange yet. I, but not only is he orange, but I can show you <laughs> something that you might either think of as super cool or really gross. So first, I'm going to show you the little orange guy. There he is, up there, looking for a place to pupate. But then down right under him is his purge. And if you don't know, that's just a little bit of it. See the liquid on that leaf? If you don't know what a purge is, they do this massive giant poop right before they get ready to um, pupate. <laughs> and if you look on this leaf, it's the rest of it. Look at all of that. All of that <laughs> came out of that little guy. who is absolutely adorable. Here y'all, I just got him to crawl on my finger. <laughs> so you can get a better view. 
And I also feel pretty safe. He is not going to do any surprises on me because how could there possibly be anything left in him after that? All right, so I'm going to let him climb back onto his plant, and he can just... <laughs> He's going to go over the plant and back onto my arm. <laughs> you guys, he crawled all the way up my arm, <laughs> so now I have him on my other hand. Let's see, here's a leaf. He says no. There we go. And just so you know, I didn't take him off the ceiling. I just put my finger up there because he was moving around and he crawled right on it. So he wasn't already starting to attach to pupate. Because when you do see them up like that, you don't want to pick them up and move them in case they have already started. <laughs> Where's he going? <laughs> Where'd you go, sir? In case they have already started to attach to hang so they can J hang. All right. So I am going to put him right back up where he was. There you go. And we're going to let him be. That was so fun. Thanks for hanging out with us, little guy. I'll hopefully see you flying soon in my garden. Again, this is a spice bush, a swallowtail, caterpillar. They turn orange right before they're going to pupate.